1976, Black History Month was recognized as part of the nation's bicentennial celebrations. It aims to honor the contributions that African Americans have made and to recognize their sacrifices. Well, what better way to kick off the month than the story of one of the first African American families to ever settle right here in Grand Junction. Back in 1881, John, Samuel, and Marcus Hines moved to Mesa County from Missouri. County records show they bought 10 acres along Orchard Avenue, breaking ground on what would soon become one of the most popular fruit orchards in town. John or Marcus Hines that had a had the orchard up on Orchard Mesa. Like that was new information to me and my family. Um, and uh, apparently it was 160 acres. The Hines brothers later sold the orchard to their father, former slave and Civil War veteran Elijah Hines, who became a beloved member of the community. The fruitful Orchard Mesa is no longer here. Orchard Mesa Elementary School sprung up in its place. But the family story goes on. Elijah's descendant, Harry Butler, born in 1943, would grow his own local legacy. Harry's great uncles, part of the group, the Black Citizens in France, helped build a house of worship for the African-American community called the Handy Chapel. It's been a part of the National Register of Historic Places since 1994 and still stands today. I believe it was 1888, um, and we're part of like the first black family to arrive here. That's Harry's granddaughter, Christine Westermeyer, who tells me Butler started his own ministry in the Handy Chapel back in 1981. She says Harry was a father figure to her, but also a local legend becoming the city's first black representative. He uh, became the first black city councilman of Grand Junction. It was 2001. Harry broke new ground in a barrier that hadn't been crossed while still preaching at the chapel. I was very proud of him because he hardly did any campaign work. Everyone just knew who he was. We couldn't go anywhere without someone knowing him. Like we were constantly, we'd go to the store and we were constantly stopping so he could talk to someone. Harry didn't stop there. In 2005, he became the first African American member to serve on District 51's Board of Education. He opened the door for us to have more diversity. Um, on our city council and our school board. Besides breaking barriers on the Western Slope, Butler was a loving man up until his very last breath. I forgot my lunch and I was working at the Mesa County Jail as a booking tech, so I couldn't leave. And I called him and I was like, I forgot my lunch. Like, and he brought it for me, made me lunch and brought it for me. And then he gave me a big hug and kissed me on the forehead like he always does. And, um, that was just like, that resonated with me because the next day he had passed away. A special memory Christine will carry with her for the rest of her life, along with one of his most famous sayings. Never let anyone steal your joy. Christine has been working at the Museum of Colorado, preserving history here on the Western Slope. 